So today we're going to talk about various topics, one of which is a very important musical concept to understand, which is chords. We're going to study chords to some extent. We're going to look at some terms that are commonly used in music. We'll do some dictation, uh, a little more complex dictation than what we've been doing, and then we're going to end with, with our weekly solfege exercises. Okay, so let's talk about chords. Can I see by show, show of hands how many people have heard the word chord? Chord, great, okay, okay. Pretty much all of you. So chord is, uh, last, last week we talked about intervals and how there were basically two types of intervals, melodic intervals. <laughs> Right? There are intervals in which the notes happen in successive manner. And there were harmonic intervals, which meant essentially that the notes happen simultaneously. So chord, a chord is more is 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 a set of pitches that happen simultaneously. So this is a chord, for instance. This is also a chord. This is also a chord, and this is also a chord. Anyway, there is absolutely no limit as to how many notes there can be in a chord. When you have multiple notes happen at the same time, there's also a set of intervals that happen at the same time, and we're going to focus on that. So there are a few ways to classify chords, because as I said, they're like, this is a chord, this is a chord, that is a chord too. So to, to, to be able to classify them, just like you classify animals and like, you know, there's fish, there's mammals, there's uh, amphibians, there's all sorts of, of sorts of animals. We also classify the chords. Um, one way of doing that is by their quality. So there are major chords like this. Life is good. There are minor chords. Dif a different, a different take, a different outlook. They're they're um, augmented chords. They're diminished chords. They all have kind of like a different character, different color. That's one way of classifying chords. Another way of classifying chords is by the number of chord members. So if we have three chord members like this, it's called a triad. That means three chord members. If it has four chord members, it's called a quadriad or a seventh chord. And there are some people that believe that two notes happening together is called a dyad. So th these are just the prefixes that you learn in your English class. The tri means three, quad means four, di means two. We, in this course today, we're going to focus on the most important one that is critical for you to, to all to understand, which is the triads. So the triads have, as I said, three parts, and they are the following. They are the root, which, which gives the name of the chord. In this, in this case, we have the notes here. Like, can you tell me what notes you see here? Anyone? Unmute yourself and just shout the note. What is the lowest note? C. C, exactly. Next note. E. E. And last, but certainly G. not least, G. G, G, exactly. So this is, this is the C major chord. Now, every note of this chord has a name because uh, we need to identify each, each member of, of, of a chord, like a family. Each, you know, every family has, uh, has, the, has, has a role in, 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 in the family. I assume most, most of you are the children in the family. I, I'm not 
convinced that you are the parents of the family, right? So if you are the children in the family, you have a particular role that you that you do in your family. So in this chord, this is the C major chord. The root, the root, is the C, is what gives the name of the chord. Is the most important part of the chord. Then we have the third, which is basically a third above the root. And then we have the fifth, which is a fifth above the root. So we have C to E, it's a third, it's a major third, and then C to G, it's a perfect fifth, okay? What is important to understand is, as you can see here, at simple sight, you can see that this chord is, the triads, first of all, are, are a stack of thirds. So you see that C to an E is a third. We can also see that E to a G is a third. It's another third. So the first third is this. C to E. Right? The next third is this. And when they happen together, major chord. Now, can someone, and because we studied we studied intervals, I, I believe it was last week. Can someone tell me what kind of third, and again, remember your options are major or minor, what kind of third is C to E, C to E? Just unmute yourself and shout it out. C to E. We are reviewing intervals. C to E, anyone? Is a major or minor? Major. Major. Thank you, Clara. Clara, we need brave people like Clara. Exactly. It's major. Now, E to E, e to G. What what type of third is that? Is a major or minor? Anyone? Yes, Arabella. Tell us. Minor. Minor, exactly. So what we just learned now is that the major chord has a formula. And this is just like the formula that you learn in, in, in math or in chemistry if you're older. The major chords have a major third on the bottom and a minor third on top of it. Minor chords are reversed. It's minor and then major. Okay, before we go any further, Let's review intervals. The major third, there, there, there are, there are exactly one, one, two, three. There are four semitones inside the major, the, the major third, right? The major third, and the minor third, three, right? Okay. So in the in your workbook that we have, let me get out of here for a second. The first exercise. Okay, so let's go to the, to, to, to the worksheet. In the first, the first line, I ask that you label all of those chords. And basically what you are doing is you are measuring the thirds. C to E flat is a major or minor, and then E flat to G is a major or minor. And all the chords here are either major or minor. And what is important for you to remember is that the formula for a major chord is going from below, major third, and then a minor third. Major third on the bottom, minor third on the top. And it's the opposite for a minor chord, okay? So let's do, let's do together the first exercise here. I, I, I'm going to unmute all of you so you can, you can, um, hmm. let me see if I can figure out how to do that. There we go. I can, I can figure it out. So can you all unmute yourself? So let's have a fluid conversation here. So 
Can, please tell me the e interval between C and E flat. C and E flat. What kind of third? C, C, C and E flat. Is that major or minor? Minor. Minor. And then E flat to G. Major. So this is this is a minor major formula, which means what kind of chord is this? It's minor. Minor. Yeah. So all the chords that are ma minor major, they are minor chords. Let's look at the next one really quick. We have D to F sharp. What kind of third is that? Major. Major, and then F sharp to A. F sharp to A, anyone? Minor. Minor. And it's okay, use your finger to count through. So this chord, the second chord is major minor, therefore it is a major chord. Okay, let's do a, do a couple on, on your own, or do as, ma as, as, as many as you, as you can in like a minute or two, and then we'll corroborate results, okay, go. You can you can mute yourselves. Any questions so far? I'll be surprised if there are none. Any questions? Questions, questions, questions. I'm looking for questions. I, I see some confused faces, so I wanna hear your questions. Jana, are we okay? Okay so far, Miles? There are no stupid questions. I want to hear your questions. Anmay and Ben, questions? Mariela Ananu, no? Okay. So figure out the, all the chords in the first in the first line. Any questions as what we need to do or how we need to do it? Miles, are we okay? Okay, great, 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 great. Do you guys have the worksheet, Mariela, Miles? Ah, okay, great. Should we do one more together? Let's go. This is the, this is F, A, and C. It sounds major, right? Very good. Because if we look at it, A to A is a major third, and then A to C is a minor third. Therefore, it's a major chord. See how this chord just sounds like so positive. It's like, it's just great. Now, if I change one note, if I make that A, A flat, it sounds completely different. Sounds dark, sounds like a rainy day, right? Perhaps a slow day, a day in which like you wake up and you just wanna go back to bed. It's complete, and, and this one is, you're springing, you're springing from bed, okay? So it's important to also recognize the chords by, by, by listening to them, so this, this is the next chord, the next chord, measure four here. We have G, E, D. Can you tell me just by listening if that's major or minor? Major, okay. So let's quickly analyze, we're, and we're getting quicker at this. Um, G to B is a, what third? G to B. What kind of third? Major. Major, oh my gosh, I have I had a choir of people telling me it's a major. And then B to D. Minor, right? So when you have major, minor. Ta-da! It's a major chord, okay? Okay, so um, 
find a, a, a blank spot in your paper and we're gonna do I'm, I'm gonna play a few chords a few oh. chords and um, and I want you to just recognize the quality of the chord I want you to tell me if they are major or minor I'm gonna play ra in random order okay here we go are we all ready can I see thumbs up if you are ready to go, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play six chords, okay? So make make sure you have six slots, and and um, and so one one through six, and then um, I'll play the chords. This is chord number one. I play each chord twice. Chord number one. Number two. Chord number three. Chord number three. Here we go. Can you please mute yourselves? Cool. Here we go. Number three. Chord number four. Finally, chord number six. Okay, let's quickly check quickly check the answers. Quickly check the answers. Number one, any volunteers? Minor. Minor, correct. Number two? Major. Major, correct. Number three? Major. Major, correct. Number four? Major. Major, correct. Minor. Number five, thank you, Miles. Minor. And number six? Minor. Number six? The last one? Last one, major. Very good. Thank you so much to all the volunteers that have helped us. Awesome. Any questions, guys, so far? Any questions about core structure, about, about anything? There are other, other um, complex chords, more complex chords that are also triads. For instance, if you have two majors on top of it, that is an augmented chord. I didn't include that in the slides, but you're welcome to write them down in your, in your, in your sheet. For instance, this chord. Spicy, right? So that's, those are two, uh, uh, two major chords, two major thirds on top of each other. That's called an augmented chord. And if you do the same with minor chords, like this one, that just sounds like, right? It sounds so tense, that is a diminished chord. So let's review. Major minor is a major chord. Minor major, it's a minor chord. Major major is augmented. And minor minor, is diminished okay so for this it's essential that you learn that you learned uh that you're really fluent and really quick 
with with saying and knowing the 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 thirds major third minor third etc so the other two exercises that i have here on this sheet for you on the, on that very sheet is kind of like the the same but inverse exercise so i want you to write the notes in for for the course so i i give you the roots these are all roots and i want you to build a major chord on, on, on each of those roots, okay? Can we try a couple and then you can take, let's do a couple of each and then you can take the rest for your summer. Whenever there's a rainy day, then you start analyzing chords at home. That's what I did when I was your age. Just kidding. I want to play in the mud. Okay, uh, let's, let's quickly build this chord. Is the, the, root, the root is E. E. And we want this chord, we want the E major chord. And can someone here please tell me what is the formula for a major chord? Jana, you look like you know it. Ben, you wanna tell us? Ben. Yes, you do. Formula major. Uh, the formula of the major chord is a ma um, one going up of major and then one going up of major. It, it's major minor exactly. Major, major minor, minor exactly. So knowing that band and all, knowing that, please build this chord on on the note E. So you'll need a major third on top of E and then a minor third on top of the notes that goes on top of E. I'll give you another secret that I haven't told you so far. On, in all major and minor chords, the, the fifth is perfect. The fifth is perfect. So if you, if you prefer, you can start by just putting a fifth. So what is a perfect fifth, fifth above E? Perfect fifth above E, anyone? Clara, you look that you know. B. B. Oh, exactly. So you can just start with the B there, and then you just figure out the third. So it's, there's nothing wrong with starting with the fifth. Again, major and minor chords all have a perfect fifth. So the fifth is a given. Okay, anyone telling me the notes? For this chord, the first chord. Where's Livia? Livia, are you there? Yeah. You wanna tell us the the name of the of the notes? E G sharp B. Precisely. Thank you, Livia. It's E G sharp and E. Thank you. Someone else wants to tell me the F major chord, the next chord. Some on, on, uh, some of the invisible people here. Josie, Evan, Isabella, Josefina. Anyone? I have a chat. I have a secret chat. Oh. Josefina, exactly. Josefina says she probably can talk, but Josefina says F, A, and C. That is precisely correct. F major chord is F, A, and C. Okay, excellent. Let's do the same with minor chords. Again, the minor chords, the formula is minor on the bottom, major on top. Rule number two, the fifth is always perfect. So what you really need to do is only figure out the lower third. And in the case of the minor chord, it's a minor third. So let's quickly resolve this. D. Let me 
check it some someone with with a video Charles Caroline and Lola is it tell, tell us um, can you play it again yes That's D minor, and I want you to tell me what the notes are in the chord. Well, D minor. <laughs> so, there's D in it. Um, there's D in it. Very good. B. Wait. What? Is there a B? There's no B in D minor. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go step by step, just the, like we've been doing. Let's figure it out. What is a third on top of D? Um, D, E, F, so F. F? So what kind of F are we going to use? F, um, flat? Uh-uh. No, F sharp, sharp. No. No, just regular? <laughs> regular, we call it natural. Yeah, F natural. Yeah. Regular F, no, it's called natural F. So D, A, F natural, so we have so far D, F natural. And with one more note. What did I say about the fifth on, on, on all the major and minor chords? Hey, wait. Tell me the rule. What did I say about the fifth of all the chords? Um, it's always uh, major. And all, it's a fifth, fifth are never major. Fifths are perfect. Yeah, 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 perfect, perfect. Perfect, okay, so what is a perfect fifth above D? A. A, who said it? Was that Charles? It was Lola. Lola. Lola, okay. Lola, you get an A today. That's the D minor chord. To recap everyone, the minor chord of D is D, F, and A. Okay, let's quickly do E minor. Someone else? Mariela, would you like to give it a shot? Uh, D? Uh-uh. So, okay, so this is something we need to pay attention. So since they are thirds, this is actually something that is really cool. If the note here is on the line, that means the notes on top of it are also going to be on the line because they're thirds, right? They skip the space. So they're going to be line, line, line. If they are on the space like this F, all the other notes are going to be on the space. So you just need to stack thirds above E. So what is, Mariela, what is a third above E? Uh, G. Exactly. Very good. G and then B. a third. Perfect. You got all the notes. It's E, G, B. Thank you, Mariela. Okay. Let's do this one because this one is tricky and I, and I love tricky stuff. Let's do the C minor chord. C minor chord. Who can tell me the notes of C minor? I see Miles gave me a couple chords here. Excellent, they were both correct. Thank you, Miles. Anyone? Audrey, would you like to contribute? Are you sure? Okay. C, E flat, and G. Who was that? Josh. Josh, C, E flat, and G. Josh, you are 100% percent correct thank you is c e flat because it's a minor third and g excellent so you do you guys know what to do now with these chords with this sheet so this is for you i i always give you more work that we that we can uh, complete in the hour here because i want you to work uh, uh, the only the only way you learn this is if you do it more than once right you won't learn it just one day, just like you don't learn to add or you don't let you subtract just in one lesson at school, right? One class, boom. Yeah, it takes years and years and years. How many years do you go to school to learn just to add or just to read? It takes years, right? 
Exactly. I've been going to school for almost 40 years and I still struggle with it. Okay. Now, we are going to move on to terms. Oh, I forgot to share my screen here. We're going to talk about terms in music. So, music it's about sounds most of the time and it's most most of the time it's about the notes and the rhythms and even the articulations and all sorts of of of, of symbols that we have developed uh to communicate and um what is really cool is that we get that information from people that are like that have been long dead i mean we still play the music of bach and handel and uh, and Corelli and Vivaldi, right? How many of you play this one? Uh, uh. Right? The Vivaldi concerto written like more than 200 years ago, right? And that is because we have developed a system of notation of rhythms, notes, articulations, bowings, breath marks, etc that have remained pretty consistent throughout centuries, which is a very cool thing. But there are certain limitations to it, which is why we use literary terms. That means terms in a spoken or written language other than music notation to explicate, to, um, to try to be very explicit about what we are trying to signify and some of the usages for 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 of those things are tempo and tempo changes character of the music dynamics and, and dynamics and the languages mostly used are this italian german french spanish english that's what you'll find the most like music written in those languages i have seen scores in greek but i don't read greek and hopefully before I die, I figure out how to read Greek so I can read those scores. And there's pretty much scores on every language. But these five languages are the ones that are most. And, you know, there, there's, there are scores that are in Arabic. Scores are in Hebrew. They are really hard to understand. Okay, so we're going to start with tempo indications. Tempo indications. So I have ordered these. I order them from slowest to fast. Now, Dimitri, what does fast mean to you? Um, like where you're playing lots of notes in like a couple seconds. Okay, good. Thank you, Miles. Miles, what does fast mean to you? going like playing more notes in less time okay so uh, uh, uh you would say a higher ratio of notes per time very good uh Arab arabella what does fast mean to you um to, to play to play more notes in a smaller period of time. Okay, kind of similar. Okay, so what we all agree what fast means, which is playing more notes per time. But we don't know how much is fast. If I just say you run fast, and I put the three of you to run fast, I'm sure you're all going to run at different speeds. Some are going to be faster than others. So fast is a very subjective term, which is why we use these words instead of saying you have to play this at 120 or at 144 or at 150 because uh, this riffs leaves room for interpretation if i tell uh, okay uh orchestra whatever the 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 mean give me the white bird lake symphony let's play adagio that's one thing and if you take it to a different orchestra, adagio means a different, a slightly different thing. So there are different shades of grade. But nonetheless, I have put this in order. So I, I'll, I will share this uh, PowerPoint with you 
later today. So this grave, largo, adagio, those are kind of like the slow, the slow tempo indications. Then in purple, purple rain, we have kind of the middle ground, andante, which andante means, if you want to write it down, andante means walking pace. So it's the pace of walking, right? It's just chill, andante. Moderato, saying uh, slightly faster. And then we start getting into, into the, the faster tempos. We have Allegro, of course, we all know. Then we have Vivace, which means lively. And then Presto, which means like really fast, okay? There are also tempo changes that we indicate with Italian. And we're mostly going to talk about Italian terms today. This ritardando, rallentando, which means progressively slower. That means you get slower and slower and slower. Ritenuto, which is slightly different than ritardando, which means immediately slower. And you will find this in music for maybe a couple bars where it says ritenuto. That just means like held. So you're, you, you immediately go slower. So there's no progression to it. You just get slower immediately. Alargando. So like if you look at the, at the language here, this, this, me, this ends in ando. Ando is like the, equi is the Italian for ing. All the verbs that, a, that end in ing, like walking, cooking, swimming. It, it means that there's something taking place, right? That there's something happening, right? That's what, what ing means. Whereas if I say, if, if I say cooked, it's different than cooking, right? Cooking implies that the progress is ongoing, whereas cooked will imply that the process has finished or that the process is, is, is um, yeah, it's finished. So ritenuto doesn't, the, there's no, no process implied because it means, it means, um, it's the past tense of retaining, it's retained. I, I wrote it here, retained. It's not retaining, it's retained. Alargando, that means widening. So it generally means longer. So every time you say alargando, what you need to do is get longer. The notes get longer and therefore it gets slower. So the result is getting slower because you're getting, the notes are getting longer and like the space in between the notes are getting wider. Okay. Add, and then we start getting into, uh, into faster tempos. So accelerando means to accelerate, accelerating. So that means progressively faster. Now, these are words that you're gonna find, uh, um, they're, they're adverbs that you're gonna find all the time. Pew, pew means more. So every time you see pew, it means more. You just need to determine more of what. You can see pew piano, pew mozo, pew ritenuto, pew crescendo, pew forte. Uh, so it just means more. Every time you see pew, the direct translation is more. So when you say pew mozo, mozo means motion, it's asking you to go faster. Meno is the opposite. It means less, less motion. These are two markings, affretando and stringendo, that are uh, a, little more, a little bit more sophisticated. Affretando means hurrying to, it literally means to rush. It's like when you're in a hurry, like you're like desperate trying to like get things done. Like your time is, 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 is less than the amount of things you need to do. So you, you hurry, right? And stringendo means to, to tighten. So it's the opposite of, 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 of alargando. You actually get it tighter. So these two in, in speaking uh, more general, afretando and stringendo means get faster, kind of like accelerando. It's just a different word, okay? Expressive terms. These are my favorites, and I, I included the, 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 the bare bones only here. There are so many of these. Pretty much, you can, say, you can say anything for expressive terms. You can say misterioso, which means mysterious. Or you can say whatever, like the, like, like the breeze. Or you can say heavenly. Or you can say uh, anything. You can say anything, literally any word. Oops, um, but I have included the ones that are that like are used the most. Someone wrote to me, so I need to check that chat. I don't know why I can access. Okay, expressive terms. 
First of all, expressivo is usually abbreviated esper, expressivo. That means expressive. That means to squeeze out all the content of the music and give it out. Cantabile, usually um, abbreviated C-A-N-T, the cantabile, means singing, on, in the manner of singing. That means you have to imagine you are singing and you are connecting beautifully all the notes. Cantabile. And I say these two words because in, in Gitsis and pretty much in a, any orchestra, we use these words a lot, even though they're not written in your music. Sometimes the conductor says like, guys, play this cantabile. You gotta sing this, sing, sing it beautifully. Be expressivo, more expressivo. Sometimes we say expressivo when we want a specific instrument to come out of the orchestra. Then we have some articulation and there are basically three main categories of articulation. Legato, legato, which literally means tied together. So tied together, what that means is like there is no space in between the notes. So the notes are... There's no space in between, the, there's no rest, there's no silence. So you try to connect all the notes, to connect, to tie all the notes. Marcato, it means marked, which in this context means accented or emphasized. So you play like a... Right, you play, you give an emphasis, you give force at the beginning of the note. And then staccato, short, very simple. Then we have dynamics also, which uh, as you, you all know, they come in uh, just abbreviations and we use like really nice fancy calligraphy to indicate there's pianissimo. Actually, I have encountered as, 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 uh, as high as five Ps. That's like really, really soft. So one thing about a common misconception about dynamics is piano means soft, forte means strong. It does not mean loud. A lot of people think that forte means loud. It means actually strong. So you gotta be, uh, it's a different meaning when you think, when you think um, uh, in those terms. A lot of people think that dynamics are, is the equivalent of volume. And it's the equivalent of just like turning the, the knob uh, uh, of the stereo. And like when you want more forte, you just turn it louder. And when you want softer, you just turn it more piano. It's not quite, dynamics are not volume. Volume, are, is, the, volume is a big part of what dynamics are, but dynamics is really a color of sound. Like a clarinet, a violin, a viola, a piano, everything sounds different with a piano color. When you're playing piano, when you're being intentional about playing piano, when you have a character playing piano, it sounds different than if you're playing forte. It's not just merely volume. So there's a, there's a greater degree of sophistication. And of course, we have crescendo, decrescendo, or diminuendo, which means, crescendo means get stronger, actually means growing. Crescendo, crescere is to grow. And decrescendo is to decrease, diminuendo to diminish. And then we have these other words, poco and molto. Poco is just like in Spanish, Italian and Spanish are very similar. Poco means little. If you see poco, a poco means little by little. Molto means much or very. So when you see molto crescendo, the composers say grow a lot. That's what it all means. Okay, excellent. So now let's go quickly to the... Uh, um, oh, chapel, I see. I want so rapido in, in, in my music. What does that mean? So rapid, it, that's very, very, that's very uh, close to, to English. Rapid means quick, means fast. So it, it, it's, it's an expressive term that indicates that you need to play something fast. And, and probably the composer writes that because not only the rhythm is fast and not only the tempo is fast, but it also needs to have that feeling, that, that anxious feeling of like something being fast, okay? Let's quickly go to our worksheet here because we have some, some matching to do. So in this one, uh, I want you to, actually, I'm gonna leave that to you to do it on your own later, but like, I'm gonna explain what you need to do. In this first activity here, I have 
the words on the left and the definitions in English on the right. So I just want you to, with arrows, I want you to connect the, the words with their meanings. Any questions on that? Any questions on any of the terms that we have discussed today? Ben, do you have a question? No, any questions? You can always uh, also type it in the Dropbox. Now, here I have these words that are tempo indications, tempo markings out of order. And there's nine of them. And I want you to put it from slowest to fastest. I will share the PowerPoint with you, which has that indicated, but I want you to do it without the PowerPoint because it's important for you to have these categories pretty much, pretty much memorized. A lot of what we're doing this summer in, in this course, and this is the last one of these uh, music theories, things that you actually need to memorize. And so use the summer to memorize these things. And finally, these are, uh, these are, where did it go? Oh, th these are, ooh, what is he doing there? Okay, th these are terms that uh, we also discussed. Some of them we actually didn't discuss, so I can give you the answer already. So uh, you have to translate this to English. And, and you are gonna encounter these a lot. I can tell you the ones that we didn't discuss, so you can just put it in there. Sostenuto, we didn't discuss. That means sustain. <laughs> it's very easy to remember. Sostenuto means to sustain. Then we discuss all of this. Subito. Anyone know what subito means? Anyone? Subito. No? Subito means sudden. That means without unwarranted like without any 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 uh, preparation for it like when you're playing when you're playing like like a loud chord like this like it gets like that would be a subito piano what i just did like there's loud 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 and all of a sudden it gets soft so it's a surprise factor so being sudden so when you see subito forte or subito faster, subito, slower, it means sudden, without any preparation. Assai, this is one of my favorite Italian words, it means very, <laughs> but it, it somehow in English doesn't have the same poignancy. Uh, it means very, so when you say allegro assai, it means very allegro, or vivace assai, very vivace. It's a del deliberate and a lot. Accelerando, retardando, with it. Non troppo. This is also great. You see a lot of this. You see allegro non troppo, or you say uh, moderate. Uh, like, yeah, allegro non troppo, or whatever non troppo, or adagio non troppo, or andante ma non troppo. Non troppo means but not a lot. Not a lot. Non is not, and troppo means much so not much so you'll see allegro ma non troppo means allegro but not not so much meno we discussed you can go back to the slides for that pew with it combrio combrio just means with vigor vigor and there are very famous symphonies that start with combrio beethoven used this a lot and you see like his music has a lot of vigor so combrio Oh, quasi. This is a word in Latin that we use a lot when we talk in English. Quasi means almost. Senza. Any stream players want to tell me what senza is? Stream players? Ben, it looks like you want to talk. No? Senza means without. It usually tells you like senza mute. Like when you need to take your mute out, senza means without. Misterioso, you can, you can figure that out. Calando, that means getting quieter, quieter. Calando means to get quiet. Morendo, 
it literally means to die, dying. So morendo means like disappear into nothingness. So get when 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 you die, you disappear. Like your 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 beat gets slower, and then the sound the the energy gets softer. So it gets softer and slower. Morendo, dying. Okay. And my favorite word that I say in rehearsal all the time, tutti. Who can tell me what tutti is? Anyone? Tutti. Audrey, tell me. Audrey, where did you go? It means that everyone has to play together. Yeah, everyone. Tutti means everyone. Tutti. Okay, very good. Let's quickly go into our selfish exercise before we call it a day. That's next in your in your um, in your uh, handout. Okay, so we are going to again study uh, st start with scales or scale like motion. We're we're here in number eighty four. So I picked this because it's a little bit tricky in the rhythm because the rhythm changes, it varies, um, but it starts all pretty much in kind of like scale like motion. So we're gonna start C, which is Do. Do. Can I hear all of you singing? Or your mouse mo moving? There we go. So let's all sing number 84. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Do, Re, Mi, Do. Okay, so there are two challenges here. The first challenge is to get the right note and the right syllable. You gotta sing in tune and you gotta say the right syllable. Challenge number two is to sing the right length. Not all notes are the same length. The rhythm is irregular. Okay, let's do it again because we can do better. There was some hesitation and some sideways head shaking, which is never a good time. Here we go. One, two, ready? Go, do, re, mi, do, re, mi, fa, re, mi, fa, sol, mi, fa, sol, la, fa. Sol, mi, re, mi, fa, re, do. Yeah, the, the tendency is to not give this re the full value. Okay, now this one, 85, is a little bit tricky. This is the last one we're going to do. I give you again one extra page for you to delight yourselves during this summer these are great exercises to sing to your family maybe we can start a tradition of summer solfege singing in the families in minnesota okay 85 so what what is tricky about 85 is that is all leaps 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 and guess what what the leap is it's a third which kind of goes along with the chords that we were studying today okay 85. I'm going to play along and sing along, and then we're going to do one more time without the piano. One. This is Do. Here we go. Three, four. Do, Mi, Do, Re, Fa, Re, Mi, Sol, Mi, Fa, La, Fa, Mi, Sol, Mi, Re, Fa, Re. Okay, 
So let's let's start by the last two measures because it's look, we just studied this. C E G. That's a C major chord. That's how we started the lesson today. So let's just start in the last two bars and let's sing that. One, two, ready? Go. Do mi sol mi do. Okay, now that we have our tonal center centered, <laughs> let's go back to the beginning and this again starts in C major. No piano help this time. This is C, Do, Do. Here we go, 85. Three, four, do, mi, do, re, fa, re, mi, sol, mi, fa, la, fa, mi, sol, mi, re, fa, re, do, mi, sol, mi, do. Good. And now the next exercises are all similar. The, the same um, challenges. Uh, there's a leaps of thirds. There's some um, um, scale-like scale mo motion and, and things like that. And, and if you have siblings in the home, you can actually sing this in canon. 87, 89, you can sing it in canon, okay? I would like to know if there are any questions about anything we, we talked about today. Any questions? I know we covered a lot and um, it's, okay, it's okay if you don't understand 100% everything. If you're still like brewing in your head, that's totally normal. I mean, we, we cover a lot. I, I actually, what we cover today is it usually takes a whole year in, in school to learn. But what I'm giving you is kind of like the nuts and bolts so you can go figure it out during the summer, right? So I, I give you the worksheet and I give you the slides that I will share later. Any questions? Clara, do you have a question? No? Anyone? Any of the invisible people? Okay, so before we leave, I want you all to check gitsis.org, gitsis.org, G-T-C-Y-S dot org and check out um check out first of all there are more sessions coming up there are not this is the last music theory session starting next week we're going to start about um the history of the orchestra and there are going to be a lot of like sample listening of orchestral pieces so there's is the uh, it's, a, it's a different it's a different uh content there's not going to be solfege and stuff anymore it's going to be about learning the history, about composers, about styles, and we're gonna do a lot of listening of, of music that, musical samples. Um, and there are some also string specific sessions, uh, but what I want you to check out is go to gitsis.org in the, the webpage that Miranda is sharing here and check out all the opportunities that we have for during the school year. There are 10 orchestras in Gitsis that you can be part of uh, after you complete your audition. And I see a lot of faces here. Clara was with me last year. She was in my orchestra. Uh, there are other people, I think Zelda, Zelda. She, yeah, Zelda was with me a few years ago. And uh, it's really fun to be part of, of, of this orchestra. We already have, um, we, we, we just had auditions and we're gonna have more auditions coming up, uh, kind of on a rolling basis. So, um, Make sure you check out the requirements and we would love to hear your auditions. You can be part of our one of our 10 orchestras. We have a lot of orchestras and I'm sure there's one that is comfortable for you to get to. Okay, any questions you guys? Miranda, anything I didn't mention that I should have? No, um, I just might as well announce that uh, we have our Concertino East conductor for our 10th orchestra, Tamara Gonzalez, and you can find out more about her on the website. So that was just announced yesterday for anybody who's interested in knowing more about that 10th orchestra. And then um, we'll also send all the slides that Ernesto put up on the screen. We'll send those to you after the meeting. Okay. Well, I hang out here if you wanna if you wanna talk, but otherwise you are all free to go. Thank you so much for participating in these sessions, and hopefully we'll see you in the future. <laughs>